very meticulous. You know, hey guys. Hello guys. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing out there? Denny was just about to compliment me, so we're gonna let him do that. Yes. <laughs> Liz is very meticulous. I told her when she took the, the novice class, she did very, very well because she was so meticulous. And I've got to, I've got to tell you, for the most part, women are more articulate than men. Oh. Men are kind of clumsy and they kind of snatch and grab, you know? Yeah. Women so, are more delicate. Yes. What are you trying yes. to say over there? We have a finer touch. Yes. But anyway, <laughs> that doesn't mean men can't do it. There's, I feel like men mostly do it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But there are many, many very fine women do it. Yeah. So. I think I feel like we just really mostly hear about that one Anne Stolman, but she still comes after her husband somehow. Yeah. I don't know. We'll get there one day, ladies. Yeah. We'll get there. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. <laughs> there is. All right, so today we are doing the intermediate to advanced tooling class that Denny does, and I have chosen the field note journal version because it's two separate floral panels. Um, and so instead of uh, trying to get through one huge checkbook cover in two days, I was like, I could probably do one of the floral sections in two days. That's a good idea. Yeah, so we're going to do that. And I have not pre-practice this everybody this is just all new i just did my coasters i did though i took the liberty of, of already since most of you hopefully have already seen the the novice uh, yeah. uh video i took the the liberty of already tracing and, and cutting the border out on yeah this. so we have pre-traced borders and cut lines so i don't know if you guys want to see this from the vertical option oh we're real zoomed out i knew it wasn't going to be great one of these days we'll so this is what we're going for this is where we're starting how fun yeah all right okay so the first step well our our mo our mode of operation yes <laughs> is right here i've got it there's 18 different steps that i have listed and we've already done number one two one and two. One and is, two. Which is cut the borders and trace the pattern. What's the printout that I have for you for that? Like for your class? A real know. nice printout? He doesn't use it. He just uses handwritten copied list. I'm, I probably have it, but I didn't think about it. Oh, now, now I've hurt his feelings. Yeah, it's all right. He'll be okay. All right, we're starting. So... So we already traced the the pattern and cut the border. So you cut the border yeah. first. You gave yourself a nice. Yeah, you, you need to cut the border first so that you know where to stop your lines on the outside because you can't always set the pattern on the leather exact. Right. So. Right. Okay, next step. In number three, it says lightly set the flower center. All right, so we got our flower centers here, yeah. which is tool PJ040. We've got our Ed LeVar whackers. Some people call them all, but today we're going to call them whackers. And I'm going to, when I say set it lightly, you have to set it where you can see it plainly, but you don't want to set it very deep because we're going to reset it later on. Now, should I do all four of them? Uh, sure. Okay. You might as well. Then I don't have to do it later. Are you doing yours too, Jenny? Yes, and yes, I'm oh. away. We're tooling along. Yeah. That's all four of mine. Okay. Next, we're going to cut our pattern with the swivel knife. Okay. I'm going to do these guys. Okay. And I always, you know, I, I'm going to repeat myself from the, from the novice class. I always start with the flowers. And then I will do my leaves and all my prominent features and all my stickers or chicken necks I, I will end up because that's all just fill in. Okay. But start with your flowers first. No matter if you cut from the outside or the inside, just don't overcut. And remember, the flow of these flowers, everything goes towards the, the center of this flower. So if you follow through with all these cuts, it ought to end up in the direct center of this flower. And 
another thing, don't be a slave to the pattern that I have drawn here because when you, uh, when you trace over paper onto a piece of damp leather, you'll hit soft spots and a lot of times things, the, the mark doesn't go exactly where you want. So just make sure you end up with a nice smooth pattern. And the, the lines, another thing to keep in mind is when you get to the end of a cut line that ends up out in the middle of nowhere, okay. fade those out into a, to a hairline. You don't want to just make a blunt stop. You want to give it some finesse. Yes. Am I doing a good job? So far. Am I not? No. <laughs> <laughs> where where do I need you to? You be? be right there. I'm chasing you. Okay. Down. Okay. <laughs> so I want to be down. basically right in the center of this rock. Does this chicken neck go? Let's see, where that, am I? Okay. I'm on. So we've got this one, this this okay. leaf goes under this chicken neck, yeah? Y yes. Th this see is this my little stem. V? Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't don't cut that little V. That's just an right. indicator mark. So cut your stem first, and then you can cut that leaf, which you already cut. But that's all right. But I would have cut the stem first because okay. cause this line ends up at that cut. Right, and then this one also goes underneath yes. my chicken neck. Yes. Okay. Okay. A lot of this is, is visualizing what you're actually trying to make. And and you were doing a fine job of that right there. Yeah, you really got to focus on which line goes on top of what other line. Yeah, if, if you look at these patterns as just a bunch of lines, it's very confusing. But if you try and pick out what part, it's, it's all a bunch of vegetation is what we're Trying to represent here. Just a bunch of vegetation, guys. So if you can figure out what piece of that vegetation it is you're about ready to work on, it makes things a little more, a little easier to understand. I think Kevin is actually kind of proud of me after he saw some of my coasters the other day. Well, he should be. Made me feel good. He doesn't give me compliments too often, guys. <laughs> and he tries to avoid it. I guess I don't know if watching this is like watching a baseball game or not. A lot of a baseball game is pretty boring, you know. You're just waiting for the batter to hit the ball. They're just waiting for us to hit the hit the hammer. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Yeah, Dean, you asked a question, how does somebody elevate it? We did answer the question when you ask it. And the answer was, you keep working, and you keep practicing, and you keep carving. Because if you don't use a tool, you don't get any better at it. 100% right. Find somebody that you enjoy. Find other patterns. Test your abilities. That's what Isaac is learning this morning. If I task him with something to test his abilities, and if he doesn't ever practice on his abilities, then his abilities don't get better. It's crazy how that works with skills in life. 
You ought to be a teacher. <laughs> you ought to be a coach. Doing. Wonderful. About half half done, maybe? Wonderful. So, Denny, you want to talk about moisture content a little bit? Okay. Uh, it's one of the most important things you can accomplish is having the proper moisture content in your leather for whatever phase you're in of your tooling. Uh, when I trace a pattern, I want quite a bit of moisture in it. You know, the leather will be pretty dark. When I cut it, if you will, if you will notice, I don't know if you can see this or not, but you want to go to the Denny's? leather. The leather is starting to lighten up and and turn back to not quite the natural color of of a dry piece, but it's turning back natural, and that's a perfect time to cut. If your leather is too dry, your knife will drag and catch. Or your knife needs to be stropped. One of the mm -hmm. that could be a problem too. But uh, uh, when you're cutting, you need it fairly dry, uh, not real dry, just the right not, dry, just the right dry. And it's something that you will have to uh, discover on your own is, is what works best for you. But uh, when you bevel. When I bevel, I like mine fairly dry because it, my beveler will uh, walk a lot easier. When your leather is really wet, it'll kind of bunch up in front of your beveler and, and you'll have to kind of bulldoze through it and that makes things difficult. When you background, I want it almost completely dry because I get a lot more crisp impression. So Dean says, evaluate, not elevate. So how do you evaluate your own leather work? Well, you join, if you want to know stuff from us, you join our Discord, you join Prince of Springfield Leather, and you put your work out there after you get done practicing your work, and then you get it evaluated by your peers. There's other places on Facebook you can do it. Go, if you don't put your work out there, it's really hard. If you want to evaluate your own work, sometimes we, uh, Aren't the best? Maybe, or maybe, Denny, would you say that you're harder on your own work? Yeah, you, the, the main thing you want to, don't try to please everyone else. Try to please yourself. Do something that you like. If you think, man, I did a really cruddy job on that, then do better next time. You'll, you know what you've done. You know, if you're proud of what you've done and, and you've done the best you could, there's not much more to be said. You know, other than do it again and try to do it even better. You know, there was a book that I read that's, that uh, the guy said, the main thing you want to focus on is try to make each stroke of your tool better than the last. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can, you can do that throughout your whole life. Your whole life as far as tooling, you know, if you will never get as good as you can be. You will only be as good as you are right at that moment. So I guess really the better question is, is what, how do you want to be evaluated? What is, what's, your, what's your goal for? Do you want to enter competitions to do it? Because there's international leather guilds, there's leather guilds here, there's other art type of guilds that you can just submit your stuff to. If you want to be self-evaluated, then I guess you can <laughs> evaluate your own stuff. Yeah, but as far as, as far as your, after you've tooled for a while, you will actually, whether you believe it or not, you will actually develop your own style. And you, mean the, you mean that the, uh, the, the, the regional styles that were there, bef that we now have, weren't there before they before like the california style well i think even inside that like you'll have your own little tweaks and and different things that you yeah. um that you do yeah right you'll every, every tooler does things different than, than every other tooler 
I right. mean, you can't hold your tool the same way someone else does. Your body isn't built the same way someone else is. It was the way that Jim Jim Lindell was even looking at your work, and he's like, I can tell that it's shared and influenced. He said, but there's little differences that I can see that that are the Denny Low flares that he put that you put into your tooling. Yeah, and you know, and, and a lot of times, for the most part, that's not on purpose. It's just just the way you see things. Right. You, your mind's eyes see things different than than everybody else's. Very nice. Don't get your feelings hurt, Dean. All right. You're not bothering right. us. I'm just, I'm just answering the question, then you make it sound like we're ignoring you from before, which is not the case. The video had just ended. All right. So we cut our pattern, and now we're going to undershot. Use our undershots. Yeehaw. And on this pattern, there's very few places to use it. But okay. the, the main place we're going to use it, and... You have two of them, and I'm going to pick the bigger one, which is the B60, I believe. I don't have the same one you have. But this? Yeah. B61. B61. Oh, I do think I have a B60. Yeah, but use the bigger one. Okay. I'm going to use my B61 undershot, which is the smooth little guy. We're yeah. not going to use... And an undershot is, is a beveler. But the main thing it's used for is to bevel an inside curve, a really tight inside curve. It gives you a lot of definition, and it saves you from having to tiptoe around that inside curve so okay. much. But where I'm going to use it will be here on these. This is what I call a, oh, right. a, a fold over. This little feature right here is a fold over. Got another one right here, mm -hmm. another one right here. It's supposed to look like the actual plant, the leaf is folded over and you can see the underside of it. But I'm going to use it right here. And then I'm going to turn it a little bit. That's all I'm going to do with that. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing right here. Now, when you hold this tool, are you holding it pretty? You, you want to hold it straight up and down. And you have to be careful because this tool is sharp. When you hit it, it will actually drive itself underneath that cut. That's okay. why it's called an undershot. Right. Because it shoots under that cut. And that, and a lot of people will call this a pedal lifter. Uh -huh. And it will lift the pedal, but, but that's just a perk. The main, the main use for this is to bevel that inside corner. The other side of this pattern with these frilly leaf flowers, mm -hmm. you have a lot of places to use that and, and the leaves. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. I remember that. Yeah. From... That's a great spot for that dead weight. Thanks for letting me know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picking on Liz because she does it to you all the time. So now it's. Did I do it? Okay. On her. Very nice. Okay. Yeah, that'll work good. Okay. Okay, now we're ready to bevel our border. The border is always the first thing you bevel. Use the biggest beveler you've got. Hold on, guys. This is going to be the rest of the video. And I'm cheating because I've got a bigger beveler. Than oh. All Actually, right. I'll, tra I'll trade you. I'll, okay. I, I've got one just like you have, too. Okay. <laughs> Danny's going to try to give me an edge here. You bevel the border in. Bevel the border in. Bevel the border in. Yeah, the the border is supposed to act like a picture frame. Right. And everything is uh, is behind and underneath that border. In the novice class, I always had everyone put a little dot in all their background areas. Oh yeah. And we can do that here too, if if you would like. If it will be easier. Probably after I bevel my border, I'll do that. Because that really did help. The reason for that dot, for that to, to mark your background area is because all the background areas always have to bevel down. Always. So if, you, so if you've got a line with a little bit of background on it, you will know which side of that line to bevel on. This is this pattern here we're doing is 
fairly simple when you look at it, but it's got a lot of lines on it. There's many lines. When you bevel, you want to bevel about as deep as you've cut. There's a lot of people that are pretty timid when they start their beveling. You know, they're afraid to hit it too hard. But the sound your your model is making is perfect. You know, you, Great. you can tell that you're hitting the bottom on it. Real thin leather. This is about to, oh, a heavy four to five ounce leather that we're working on. If, if you're working on something pretty thin, you've got to be careful when you bevel. You've really got to be careful when you use your undershot. Yeah. I know in the past and probably in the future, <laughs> I have uh, undershot it right out. I've undershot. You can you can hold the hold it up to the light and from the back side you can see a little daylight it looks like you filigreed it and then you know you need to line it yes <laughs> you're gonna be fancy and set them ready i know i'm so excited i got a i got a, a goblet today from my good friend andrew i found him these really cool goblets um at an antique store when I was in Vanita, Oklahoma last year, visiting my aunt. And uh, so I got him a whole set and he's like, I'll, I'll make you a, a holder for when we go to the Ren Fest this year so that you don't have to worry about carrying in your goblet. Vanita's been in the news quite a bit lately. Yeah, I know, my uncle's not very excited about that. What's been going on? They're gonna build a $2 billion amusement park. Oh, well, people are getting arrested every day. Oh, well. Speeding tickets on. Oh. Oh, oh, right. <laughs> we watched that. Yeah. Country music stars being bad drivers. Stars of very loose term. Country music personalities. <laughs> okay. While you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and mark my background. I'm gonna. I'm almost ready. Dot in all my background areas, so people can see what I was talking about. I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, Denny, Denny loaned me his fun stylus. Yeah, aren't those neat? All right, so I like to use my example for when I mark my background. There was a question here whenever you get done marking your background, Denny. Okay. I'll try to answer it. Well, it's going to be great. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be great. All right. That's all I need to know. It's going to be a good one. When you uh, you draw your own patterns, it's a good idea if you can try to make all of your background areas approximately the same size. You don't want a real big background areas and a lot of really tiny ones. Hmm. You know? Okay. And uh, you know these aren't uh, if you measured them they aren't exactly the same size but they're similar. There's a few small ones. I mean there has to be, but there's no big areas. All right, I'm ready to try an answer to the oh, question. Right. How do you hold your ball? I've been told by so many people to hold it a certain way, and they're all different. All right, here's here's the way that I feel about it. You got your case off on camera? Can you see it? If you hold your, your maul like, like a hammer and go like this, to yeah. me that's wrong. You've got to use your arm. If, if you turn it around perpendicular to your body, 
you can just use your wrist like this. You get a lot better rhythm uh, and your arm doesn't your arm doesn't get tired. Your wrist might, but your arm won't. You know, if you're this pattern, you're gonna do a lot of beveling. So so if you hold your, your maul right, you have an advantage. If if you're sitting there hammering on it like you're driving nails, <laughs> it's it's gonna be hard on you. Articulate at the wrist and not at the elbow. That's right. That's right. If you will, if you will watch, if you had a far off view of me, a far off view. Okay. My my my, my 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 arm isn't going like this. It's going like this. See, hammer, maul, hammer, maul. <laughs> How's that? Yep. We're not hammering. We're yeah. mauling. That's right. Mauling. We're, we're mauling this thing. All right. And you've got your background areas, Mark. I do. Okay. You missed one line. I see it. So I'm going to cut it for you. Thanks. Ah. Also, I do have a question about up here. Okay. So I you, think you that maybe this line, line went the wrong way. No. No? That's a flower bud. Let's see if I can find where you are. Yeah. Oh. Right. So that's not... Oh, well. But that's okay. Yeah, a lot okay, of times I'll tool different than I <laughs> No, that's fine. Okay. That makes that that makes it work better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I was like, I'm missing something. So then we're gonna background and background. Perfect. Okay. Now that we've marked our background areas, remember every line, if you're if you're looking at say you're gonna bevel this line, you're wondering which side to bevel it on. There's a piece of background. So this line has to bevel on that side. The background has to bevel down. Always has to bevel down. You never bevel part of a line on one side and the other part on the other side. One, That's right. It bevels the same side all the way through. Yeah, when we were taking our class, our, uh, our friend's dad that was with us taking the class, he was just beveling the element. He wasn't beveling the line. Yeah, that's right. Kind of necessarily, especially when it comes to these chicken necks. You have to follow the whole thing all the way down, and he would just do like between these two lines. Yeah. And then he would switch. And so it took him a minute to kind of get through his head that yeah. like you need to follow this flow. Yeah. I think he finally figured it out though, didn't he? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, he did. It was good. All right. Okay. Here we go again. Here we go. And there again, you know, I if you follow a routine. It'll be, you can keep track of yourself a lot easier. So I always, when I trace a pattern, I always start with the flower and then the leaf and then all the other structures and then the chicken necks. When I, when I cut it, I go to the same routine. Mm -hmm. And when I bevel, I do the same thing. Every tool I use, I, I go through the same routine. Do those elements first. Chevy, why you gotta be calling me a caveman out there? I see you. I'm looking. I see your comment. <laughs> Liz is going to keep practicing and she'll be able to articulate. Yeah, like. At her wrist. We're doing better. But beveling is definitely. It definitely. If you watch me bevel, I'm not as smooth as the man next to me over here. Well. He has many more hours beveling As than I do. Jim Linnell would say, I've done this before. <laughs> uh, Denny just made the funnest little set of tapaderos. <laughs> Got those all finished up last week. What a great dead way. Thanks. <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> I don't want them seeing my beveling skills. What are you talking about? You know, and and that's beveling is hard enough, but if your moisture content is right, it it certainly does help you make things easier. When you're too wet, leather will bunch up in front of your beveler, and it's hard to get up over the hill. It's like a, your car when you get up against a curb. You know, it doesn't just idle over. If you have to give it gas, if you're going to get over that curb. The leather's too dry, though. Your tool will just bounce and not make much of an impression. 
Looks good, Chevy. Does look good. <laughs> okay, I've done first flower. Now I'm going to go to the second flower. Me too. I was the fastest tooler in our class. You were. You were. We we didn't give out gold stars for fast tooling. But we didn't. Let's see if I find one. What's but I, I also had an unfair advantage that I at least done a little bit of tooling. Yeah. So I wasn't going to get too vocal about it. Kyle did very well. Kyle did he, well. That's he is, of he is very, very meticulous about what he does. He's not your average fella. Yeah. Baffling along if you get some little chop marks. It's choppy and make a little track behind yourself. You can go back over it backwards and, and get rid of those marks. That's that's what I did just now. I do see the vending for your printout that I have. Uh huh. I'm going to have to make one for the field note because I only have the Roper wallet. Okay. I don't know that we made one for the uh, other one. But... It should be the same set of instructions, right? Yes, but it doesn't make two like vocal wallet mm. on the top of it. And the pattern is the vocal wallet. Design. Gotcha. Yeah, I got Denny all fixed up. It's just that Denny is pretty thick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some say dense. <laughs> yeah, that works too. All right, now that I've got the flowers done, I'm going to do both flower stems. Sounds like a plan. And when you're when you're beveling, just like when you cut, when you get to the end of a line that ends up. Out in the middle of nowhere, uh, taper it off, you know, bevel it out to a hairline. You know, I don't, I don't talk about this, that stuff in the, the novice class very much because it's, it's hard enough for someone who's never done this before to grasp the idea of what we're doing to begin with. But this, I'm trying to teach a little bit of finesse. <laughs> when I started tooling, I didn't take any lessons. I just went to Tandy's and bought a wallet kit or whatever it was, and, and it showed you what tools to use. And, and I just kind of banged and chopped around and did what I did, and I did that for many years. The old banging chop. Yeah. But then I started... It, I guess it wasn't really till I went to work for that saddle maker, Bob McRae, that I actually started getting some instruction and some insight into what I was trying to do. You got some critique. Yeah. And then I tooled for years like that. And then I went to Wyoming and worked with Keith Seidel. And I became very humble. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like my leather's getting too hard. Yeah. I love my dead weight, but I keep thinking about when Jim Linnell was here, people were talking about dead weight. He said, if you need a dead weight, it means you aren't holding your tool right. So <laughs> <laughs> He never uses one. 
And for the most part, he's right. I mean, you can sure get by with that one. I never used to use one. Okay, now I'm going to do my leaves. First pick up just one long chicken neck. You have in this advanced class, I, I uh, specify two different sizes of bevelers. They're the same type of bevelers, they're just two different sizes. But in reality, you want to use the biggest one you can without leaving a lot of tracks behind yourself. When you get doing a real fine curve, you need to switch to your smaller bevelers. And using a small beveler is a challenge to a lot of people because you're used to using this big old clumsy one. <laughs> and the small one has a lot smaller bearing surface. You've got to use more finesse when you, when you stamp with it. Learning to use your tools is is one of the most eye-opening things you can do. Because your tool is, this is just a beveler, but you can move your leather around with it. You can move the line. If you've got a line that has kind of a kink or a dog leg in it, you can smooth that out with your beveler. Yeah. These fine people are watching me just be real not so sure about everything. Well, you aren't supposed to be positive about it. <laughs> uh. I mean, people that are that are already accomplished toolers probably wouldn't be taking a class. That's right. You guys got to start where I am. So here we are together. Yes. Yeah. What do they say? The Sistine Chapel probably was not Leonardo da Vinci's first effort. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Danny, do you have a preference on whether you go forwards or backwards with a beveler? Nope. nope. You go both yeah, ways? Go both ways, yeah. There's some lines, like the lines that I was talking about that end up out in the middle of nowhere, you can't start at that end, the nowhere end, because mm -hmm. you can't fade into a line. You can only fade out of it. I say you right. can't. You can't do it well. Right. So you need to start at the other end, and sometimes that means you have to bevel from your weak side. Now I've got my flowers, my stems, and my leaves done. So I'm going to start on those foldovers. Those are those are the only other actual features on this, other than the chicken necks. And that one bud. Oh yeah, flower bud. Switch to my small beveler to go around this inside here. Even the where we used our undershot, mm -hmm. I will I will kind of still just kind of fly through that with the beveler. I don't know if you saw what I did, but but if you will look here, can I get a clock close up here? All right. Overhead. All right. 
You're going to have to hold it up if you want any closer. Okay. <laughs> okay, like right here, you can see there's a line where that, where that undershot ended. So you've got to get rid of that. So I do that with my, with my small beveler. I'll just bevel all the way through that line. But it doesn't take much because you've, you've actually got it beveled. All you've got to do is just kind of knock that, that edge off. Why do you call them chicken necks? Seems like turkey necks or goose necks would be more appropriate. Okay. <laughs> I think Denny also says goose necks. Yeah. Well, goose necks is what to pull on the truck. Yeah. We'll call them whatever you guys want to call them. Liz is old enough to know better, but still too young to care. I think I think that we should have a, a contest to see who can guess my age. I, I feel like some of you already know it. I know it. So. Liz and I are basically the same age. Ha. 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 That's what Tony wants to believe because he's old. Liz and I are basically the same age. And that is a true statement. <laughs> I didn't know we were the same age, Justin, right? Well, I've been both all you guys' age twice. <laughs> you he says he does most of us because I'm not included in that. <laughs> Doop to do. Then he says, don't be afraid to turn your project. That's right. Do whatever it takes to be able to do your job. Larry says 33, Jocelyn says 33, Wayne says 25. Jesus. Thanks, Wayne. <laughs> I appreciate you, buddy. But, but a lot of you got it correct, but not Wayne. <laughs> That's better than Nappy Light. <laughs> You have that going for you. It's all right, Justin. Your blood, your blood pressure is good. Yeah, he also said twenty-nine. It's always twenty-nine. We never get older than thirty. How old are you in Lego years? I don't think I know the answer to that question. Legos are ageless. Maybe it's timeless. Timeless. I did just buy a whole bunch of Legos last week. So he's basically a kid. I spent I spent adult money on Legos last week. Adult money. I spent adult money. That means big, they big were people. Too. <laughs> this is what you're trying to say. Uh, Justin, you're ready to go. Well, that new Green God set came out, guys. I had to have it. So I do. It just came. Yeah. I had to have it. I had to have it. All right. I've got all my features done. I'm starting on the good part. And I'm going to generally, I'll start right around the center of that flower. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do everything that goes to the flower. And I will do that on the other flower. And then I will go around the outside and finish up. But see, after you've got all your features done, these long flowing lines are gravy. 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 Like the biscuits and. Yeah. <laughs> Which is also something I have this weekend. My wife was going to make elderberry jelly. She picked a bunch oh. of elderbe elderberries. And she made a bunch of jelly. But some of it, she didn't get the pectin or whatever right, and it turned into syrup. And she made pancakes yesterday. Man, Ooh. that is some good syrup. I'll tell you that much. Then he says, I am not mad about your situation. No. That does sound delicious.
How did you guys grow the elder elderberries? No. Uh, did her, you steal her, them? Her son. Do <laughs> we steal them? Well, basically, yeah. Her son had an elderberry bush in his yard. She was loaded. Nice. Does he live around here? I yeah, see. he lives in uh, Stratford. And then there were a bunch of them just growing on the side of the road. Elderberries are tricky, though, because the birds will get them if you aren't quick about it. Like the mulberries. Yeah. It's always all of ours that always get stolen by the mulberry, or by the birds. Do you do anything with the ones they don't steal? Well, I mean, we'll go out there and we'll pick some and we'll eat them. Yeah. Um, sometimes Chris freezes them and he puts them in his yogurt. We have a white mulberry tree in our yard. We have about seven mulberry trees in our yard. <laughs> it's a situation. <laughs> Eugene said his son is getting into sports and race cars and he's putting and he's been putting together the speed champions from what you Technical race cars. Nice. I also collect some I have a they got really expensive and then they just keep coming out with a ton of them. And so I have a lot of the Speed Racer sets, but I haven't bought any, I don't think, this year. Um, they're just so expensive. But I've been trying to keep up with my Harry Potters. We do have, one of these days, we've got the Bugatti and the Lamborghini, the big Technic sets. And so one of these days I'll build those. They're still just in their box. But I've seen a lot of people that have cool displays of them mounted on the wall. So that would be my goal. All right. Maybe here we go. This is a, mm -hmm. beveling is pretty long and drawn out, but Wednesday we'll get to the meat of this subject. You mean Friday? Yeah, that's what exactly what I meant. I know you did. <laughs> Remember, I've been your age twice. <laughs> <laughs> You got his wife the big Ghostbuster car with lights oh, nice. and siren set too. Nice. Yeah, I bought one light set for my man. I brought it in a long time ago for the when the Friends Central Perk came out. I bought the light set for that, and so I built it all up. It's it's pretty neat. So the whole little coffee shop lights up. Thirty three was the answer. 33 is the answer, yes. That's. That's what I thought. I thought we were pretty close to the same age. Yeah, pretty, exactly the same age. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Don't tell anyone. Oh, my gosh, there's a goat worker. Been married four times. All to the same woman. I don't ask questions. That's good. <laughs> that means probably, that, probably not a good answer for it. <laughs> yeah, if I ask questions, that means I have to be listening to the answer. What do you think they're rolling along here at SLC? Rennia Black Die? Oh, yeah, guys. The Rennia Die came in. Uh, last week? Yep. Okay. So last week I sold a couple of quarts when we went to the hammer in this weekend, some of those sheath makers. Um, so if you've been waiting for it to actually come in, it's here. So that's super exciting. You can try out absolute black. Oh, 
Look, here's what I made Denny for his tooling classes. Very good. Why didn't you make me bring that in today? I didn't know that I had to make it. I like you I, have to make me do stuff. I created it for you. And I pressed the punch off, and I said, "Let me know when you run out." And, and then he ran out, and then he just wrote it down again, and then he just went to the copier. Then he knows how to copy things pretty good. Not on the new machine. No, not on the new machine. I'm I'm not allowed over there. And I'm glad. What What else? We talked about. Renny and Black Dye, SP Foot. Mm -hmm. SP Foot is now available on the website, which has never been a thing before. Tony and I went shopping yesterday. We got some cool stuff. Oh, there's a really crazy cowhide rug from Moran Giles that will be available tomorrow uh, that has a rubber backing. Supposedly it's patchwork. We didn't actually look at the rug, but supposedly it's like a really large patchwork rug with a rubber backing. Like this thing doesn't fold. It's it's very interesting. So it won't slip around on your floor? Yeah, it's, it's legitimately a rug. Larry said he got his black last week and I did see his order come through. We had Herman Oak Economy Plus yep. for all of about three days, and that went through 72 sides of that. A new color yellow of the SLC um, shirt. Oh, yeah, that came in. Oh, really? Got that picked up. I probably need one of those. A pocket leather gauge. Mm -hmm. A pocket leather gauge just hit the website yesterday. Dyed veg single shoulders. Those bridal. The bridal single, single shoulders. shoulders. Yeah, I think you can buy you can buy one or two of them for twenty bucks, or if you buy three or more, uh, it would be four, uh, forty. Three. Talking about the shirts? No. no the dyed, I see the pricing might need to be adjusted on that. It should be three plus would be not $40. It needs to be like 15 each. Oof. I don't buy those yet. Oh, that's cool. Larry said the, the Leather Guild there in town is doing a tour of SB Foot on the 28th. Send us some video clips. Isaac needs them. But if you could do it today instead of when you're planning to do it. <laughs> Nothing. Here's the, the pocket gauge. Yeah, it's kind of a cool thing you can just add to your next order. Just a cute little... It'll be, I mean, you still can't get very far into your leather with it. But. I think the throat is three quarter, three quarter inches uh, to get on the throat opening. But 15 bucks. <coughs> yeah. We should probably charge more for that. Oh, well. But we're nice go. people. Most of the time. Nope. Nope, we're not nice people? Nope. That's right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just saying nope to myself. A brown bird did come in the other day, took her on a yeah. tour, that was Monday. And then uh, yesterday, Mark came in, Duckman Leather, and brought us some things. Look at those little tags. Duckman. Cool name. Those yeah. are nice. Oh, actual ear tags. Yeah. And then uh, um, a little a little beanie hat. Very nice. And then a normal hat. Oh boy! Yeah. 
feel like maybe I messed up there. We're just going to background this. And then that line will just go away. No, you're, you're doing right. This one just beveled to here on this side. Okay. This one bevels all the way around on this side. Okay, so I missed my background. Yeah, this is background right here. You're doing fine. You haven't missed anything that I see. Then what's next? Backgrounding? Background would be after this. Are you going to get all your backgrounding done in four minutes? Probably not. My background between now and... Ah, uh, no, nah, it won't take long to background and we can do that, right? Maybe we'll background half of it and then we can finish. Yeah. Almost done. I had to let Denny beat me, you know, I couldn't. Denny, did I show you these plates that came in? I don't believe so. I would like to see him. Okay. Whether you should or not. <laughs> now, who made these? Are these Sergey? Sergey made them oh. off of your off of your tooling pattern that we sent him. Pretty nice. Yeah, we'll have to set up a jig. Get that all set before we start selling it. But be people will be able to buy the field note journal. No kidding. Put your tooling pattern on it. Pretty nice. We'll do what the factories do, and we'll just be able to stamp out some, some yeah. thingies. Yeah. The field note journal. Yeah. And there's also this wallet. But Andy didn't line it up like that. I may have to get it where he can get it in one whole plate. Yeah, that'd be hard to line up. You could even use those on the field note journal. Uh -huh. Is that two separate plates? It is, isn't it? Well, it's the same plate, it's just flipped over. Yeah. Just turn. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And then you came up with that. Whenever Is that Liz, the one you like? That's the one I like. Whenever Liz says it, they can get an embossing wheel of that. Oh, no, it wasn't that one. This one. I like the one that's plain that I didn't do all the background. This one. Yeah, yeah that one. Yeah, that's my favorite. Randy says he likes the bathroom. Everybody loves our bathroom. We had to compete with Bass Pro, you know. <laughs> Although I was in there the other day and I went to the bathroom and I was like, this isn't as cool as I remember. Uh -oh. they, you know what? They took they took the paper towel holder down and I think the toilet paper dispenser, didn't they? Yeah, I think it's just regular. And I don't remember hearing any like tweeting. Like before when you walked in, it sounded like birds in there. Like, like the middle of the forest. And I didn't remember that when I went in. So, all right, Denny, I think I got it. What do you think? Did I miss any lines? No, and you did everything on the right side. I'm so well, did proud. I, did I mess up here? Nope, nope. Because I don't you know what that know. line is. That line is just, see, here's your, your flower stem. Mm -hmm. It comes around, stops there. The other side of it's in behind this leaf. Okay, so should I no. bevel that, or is it okay? Uh, yeah, bevel it a little bit on, on the outside. The outside. Okay, yeah, just taper it off. Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. All right, we got we're needing close-ups of certain things. All right. So this is the same for what Liz is doing. It just doesn't say advanced rover wallet on there. It's a field note journal, but the. I think all yeah, steps of the same. 
yeah, it doesn't even need the rope or wallet because it's the same. Yeah, the same you still go through scenario the scenario. Okay, both. well, I can take that off. Okay. It'll just be the advanced tooling. And I need some more of those, by the way. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know what I else know. I need? Okay. Some more of those uh, brochures. Oh. Uh, the trifolded deal. Your tooling classes? Yeah. And then they wanted to see a close up of that, too, I suppose. And let's not leave out Liz's tooling. You can see, you can see it. Liz did wonderful. That's right there. Well, what about your tooling classes, Denny? What about them? They are, uh, I have a novice tooling class the first or the third Saturday of every month. And I have a uh, advanced, uh, intermediate advanced the second or the fourth Saturday of every month. Uh, they start at nine o'clock in the morning, go till around five or when everybody gets sick of it. Whenever you Whatever. just can't tool anymore. Yeah, when you're just worn out. And we'll that quit. does happen. Uh, the, there's a, a certain number of tools. I think you probably have it listed on the website somewhere, all the tools that they need. Yep, in the brochure. Okay. And, uh, and because the brochure's also online underneath the education tab for leather carving classes. Great. It costs us a hundred dollars. And I, <clears throat> the month of October, I won't be having any classes because then he's flying out of here. I'm flying out of here. Plus we've got farm fest. That is true. We have yes. farm fest for the, just the one first weekend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then the rest of the weekend, but, but then if then I get my trailer back, I got to get a new axle put under my RV. You missed it on Monday. Everybody had to make comments about Liz parking trailers, <laughs> which if Denny goes, then I, Try to make him park the trailer. <laughs> hey, but you've done well. I've seen you. Once a year, guys, I park a trailer. <laughs> well, I have to do it multiple times in that one weekend. And so I get I get I get a good amount of practice in and then I just don't do it again until the next October. So if somebody wants to get signed up for your tooling class, they can call in and do it? They can call in, they can talk to me, or they can talk to him in the office and they'll sign them up. But... Mm -hmm. Or something else fancy that we made you can by do we it. By we, I mean me. Denny didn't you, do it. <laughs> Denny does nothing. <laughs> so we made a sign-up place where you can do it right on the on your computer and pick the Great. schedule, and then they can then the office will contact you for the payment part of it. Great. Yeah. It's way too complicated. My I know. All I need mind. you to do is teach two, and that's all I need. All to right. Do. That's good because that's all I can do. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. All, all right, guys. Sure your full saddle that you had with half Daryl's on the Discord. Oh. Oh, there is? I, I did. I put it on the Discord. All right. Underneath the Dingle Love Family page. All right. <laughs> no, Steve, not yet. I I mean, that's that's a dream of Tony's, but we haven't gotten there yet, so. Yeah, they're remote for you. You have to come to Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> you can remote your way here in your car. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, uh, Friday we will continue and we will get the rest of at least this one side finished up. Um, and then next week we'll be doing something fun. It's going to be great and awesome. I'll look, we'll look at the schedule after yeah, this. We'll look All at right. The schedule. So, There's a lot going on. That's why September isn't planned out. We're going around Denny being gone. We're going around shows that we're going to be at with Liv being gone. I have some stuff planned. We're just, there's a little holes I need to fill in. And I, Today's the first day I can talk to him of the whole week because otherwise I try to not text him when he's not here. That doesn't always happen. And sometimes he responds. Sometimes. <laughs> but If I hear the little ding. Yeah. And he's like, oh, hey, somebody's something's trying to get a hold of me. What's going on? What could it be? <laughs> All righty, guys. We'll see you tomorrow for live shopping at 2 p.m. Central on Facebook. We'll see if it works this week. And Twitch. Um, otherwise, we'll see you Friday at 11 again for the part two of the advanced tooling class. Yep. Bye. Bye. Have a good week.